Two weeks after he was injured, Anwar Mustafa's pain hasn't eased. Knocked unconscious from the blast at Beirut port, he spent a few days in hospital and is now left to deal with his injuries alone. The father of six is a Syrian migrant worker who are among the worst hit. Being left out of an already struggling system is not hard. Where can I go for a checkup? There's no one to take me. Someone was supposed to pick me up five days ago to scan my head, and I'm very dizzy. I can't get up. Hundreds of Syrians were injured in the explosion. Many worked and lived near the port. There were also 30 percent of the more than 180 people confirmed dead, and they too are among those unaccounted for. My daughter died. My wife broke her back and she needs leg surgery and cannot move. My other daughter broke bones in her neck. The Kino family lived here for 13 years. Like so many others, they had no idea the smoke that was billowing from the port less than a kilometer away would trigger such a devastating explosion. That is why the family was outside when it happened. Falling debris killed Ali Kino's 16-year-old daughter, Sidra. The family has since moved in with the eldest son, Mahmoud, whose home is too small and income too little to care for them in an unwelcoming country. The hospital where my father was treated demanded money, even though the Ministry of Health said it would cover the cost for all the victims. Hospital management insisted Syrians had to pay. We managed to discharge him after a journalist who was at the hospital brought attention to our case. The nearly bankrupt state has been largely absent in relief efforts, but even before the blast, human rights groups have documented how Syrian refugees and migrants are discriminated against. The Kino family hopes they will receive support from the UN, which is helping 100,000 Lebanese and Syrians rebuild their homes. I don't know where I will be in the near future. I'm at my son's right now. I don't know what is next. The explosion destroyed neighborhoods, devastated lives and people's livelihoods. But for those who already live on the margins of society, the road to recovery has yet to start. Zena Khudr, Al Jazeera, Beirut.